Hey, this is Bill Chris back in the cave, and today I'd like to talk to you about high school blitz packages. Uh, ones we ran out of the 3-4 defense that were successful for us. And uh, I think more important than just drawing, like I'm going to send this guy here and his egg up and draw arrows and stuff, I, I think there's some other moving parts of blitz packages that make them successful, particularly at high school level or lower. Uh, we spent a lot of time, as much time as we could on blitzes. We have two-way players, so that affects how you should run blitz packages because you don't have guys spending all week learning the coverages, learning you know where to be when another guy blitzes and how to blitz and drilling it. Uh, you ought to keep your blitz packages pretty small. And uh, to me, personally, my blitzes or the blitzes I use, I don't know how I invent the blitzes, but... Uh, I use them mostly uh, uh, as a run pressure, run down uh, defense, not so much I get to the quarterback. And uh, the reason is it's because I believe that a high school quarterback is no longer as good as a Division I or an NFL quarterback. They're not as sophisticated. Even in two-way goes, teams are one-way go teams. Uh, there are circumstances where you can bring pressure, but you don't need to put a lot of pressure on a high school quarterback. If you do, they're more than happy to run. Often they are the best athlete on the opposing team, and I don't want them running in space. The whole thing about offense is, is mismatches in space. Well, you send all your best players to X here where the quarterback stood up, you call the cadence, and then you have him out here on the edge, and all your best your linebackers are here, and your shell is 15, 20 yards off the ball. You're in trouble. <laughs> so... I've seen a lot of film and a lot of kids get scholarships um, getting out of trouble on sloppy blitzes. And uh, everything you get is you're susceptible to trick plays. So, I mean, I, I've seen they send the house and they run a double reverse behind a gigantic line. And everybody's running to the middle of the field. And the ball's out here in the edge going for long conversions long yardage so you know you, you got to have your cats disciplined to blitz and kids the way they approach blitz is they hear about it on sunday tv um they hear, hear about it you know announcers talk all the time gotta bring pressure gotta bring your blitz of course it's glorified uh linebacker gets it everyone gets excited and they want to do that and, it, and that's great but they're not seeing the sausage behind making that blitz successful they're just seeing the big hit on a standing target in the pocket so in reality, uh, what kids do, what they want to do, is you say blitz, and they know it's actually easy for them. I know i got to run as fast as I can. If you make these guys, they're your linebackers because they're aggressive, then you know they're going to run to X, X being where the quarterbacks took the snap as fast as they can, regardless of what they see, regardless of what they encounter along the way and they're out of it and they blitzed it was fun it was exciting it's it's a it's a natural thing for kids to want to do so the hardest part for me was to teach kids how to blitz because frankly you got to make exciting but you're being a little bit of a killjoy but you want to win football games you want to convert you want to get the offense off the ball and uh have a chance to uh score yourself so um i spent a lot of time with these guys telling them all right, I'm blitzing you. You're blitzing. We do have we do walk them up the line of scrimmage sometimes. We do let them have some fun. But in a general blitz package out of the 3-4, whether we're at a 4-3, 4-2, these two guys, the edge guys, I want them coming from space. I want them coming. I had them lined up four, depending on the offense we were playing, what was going on, four and a half yards off the ball. Okay, and uh, I want them attacking their gap. But all I, I told them all, the only difference between a blitz and a regular play where you're not blitzing is I have taken the run response, the pass responsibility off you. You have no pass responsibility. That's it. You play it exactly the same as you would any other down. Now, though, instead of keying your read and uh, reading runner pass, you're assuming run and you're going. That's the only difference. And... Believe it or not, everyone should know that, you know, and maybe we all do know that, but the kids, that's like kind of eye-opening because that's not what they think it is.
So I'll tell them, you have no past responsibility. <clears throat> Your job is not to get to X. If he's there, yeah, sack him. Okay? Your job is to read on the way as if you're on a run. So all of a sudden, let's say we get a mass jet or something outside flow, fast flow. I do not want my linebacker caught up here trying to get to X while the ball's out here taking the edge. He has to flow with the ball. So he has no pass responsibility, pass cover responsibility. If he sees X, he might now, you know, he's coming. That's why he's four yards off the ball. It's time to read. He's coming, coming, bam, they hand off mesh. He's still responsible for getting to the edge. I don't want to hear I was on a blitz coach. You're a linebacker. I'll get someone else that can do it. You're four yards off the ball. Within two steps, you see Jet coming. What do you think it is? What's your responsibility? You are a run linebacker without any pass coverage responsibilities. Get your butt out there, okay, or we won't blitz. So, once you get that through the kids to understand, uh, you actually get more sacks. And more importantly, if you have less, sack, less sacks, you're, you're going to get more punting situations. All right? so, so, they understand that they are just a guy without any pass responsibility. Which means, now, the other linebackers have increased pass responsibility. So, they can't just do what they were always doing. So if I'm sending, if I'm sending the Mike who in R3-4, he has flat, he has short wall of three. This Will now knows he has deep middle, particularly he's going to drop to the hole. It'll be a hole rat right here, unless he sees the back go to the flat. Okay, and there's different ways you can do that. I mean, I did that to keep it simple. You could have them, you could have the joker, okay, take care of the flat and the free safety, go cover two with these two guys here with the free safety. But uh, to keep it simple, I would just have a guy drop to the hole because a lot of times we're going to see meshes, or you can go man. Um, coverage is as big a part of a blitz as the actual rushing the quarterback. And, you know, since we had kids that were, Two-way players, uh, we kept our coverages to, you know, our wheelhouse of comfort, which was mostly we were in cover three. That meant that the corners, free safety didn't have really a lot of differences, whether we were blitzing or not, gave us a shell. Uh, we ran some cover two, and uh, man free is a great option for blitzes. Of course, on blitz downs, you're going to get a mesh, you know, and, and uh, so I, I like staying in zone behind the blitzes, but... For what we did and who we faced but my whole goal isn't really uh to get pressure on the quarterback i believe that you know and I, there's good quarterbacks out there and this might not apply you you got a guy on the film that can deliver uh and he's got a sophisticated route pattern he's got hots he can throw the ball he's got timing routes going you might want to send pressure to get him off the x and disturb him most quarterbacks, okay, I don't want to give them a receiver in green grass. I want to make a lot of junk in front of them. So I played a lot of coverage on passing downs, and I wanted, I got other videos on it, I wanted an interception over a sack. I wanted a steal possession because stealing possessions, turnovers, win football games more than any other stat. So I would uh, flood the backfield here and take away his passing options and, and then be prepared to uh, tackle the scrambling quarterback. So that was also stressed in our blitz packages. You know, don't expect the quarterback being X. He's going to be scrambling. So we kind of try to build a net around him. So what's the other linebacker? Next? To make it simple, if I'm sending Mike, linebacker next to him, the other would drop to the will. Okay. If we sent, would drop to the hole. If we sent, there was, this would be on a rundown. Uh, this was called... Uh, swarm Sam will and Mike our joker here would drop to the hole as fast as he could okay free safety would have back out of the backfield in our standard package our joker is basically a, a defensive end he in a standard down where we were in base defense this guy's job was the rush 
He was always a rush. We run a tight four eyes joker rush. So in our swarm call, Samuel and Mike went, he's out. He is not rushing. He's out of the pack, rush package. Now he has pass. I'm telling him he has pass coverage responsibilities. And it was the drop to the hole. Okay. <clears throat> Reading the back, but we had over here in this thing, we had the free safety in the corner, corner flat, he'd have the back, and uh, whoops, the two by two, I raised my slot. The uh, Joker could have the back if he came out of the backfield, if he went the other way, he dropped to the hole. So what are some of the blitzes we ran with that understanding of, of how to blitz? The weird, you know, I also have to make sure when these guys go that they hit the leverage point of the offensive lineman. We can't have this guy getting in here thinking that he's attacking and we have two hats, two hats and one gap in the B gap, and then we get a rush up the middle here. We they had to attack. The corresponding gap in the right leverage on the offensive lineman. So the Mike I understand he had to be inside the guard, outside the tackle. Okay, the Will, same thing on the other side. He's always outside the tackle. Okay, he's outside the tackle. We always had to hit our gaps, okay, inside the wing. So they brought him down here as a tight end. And we're sending a blitz against the tight end. Okay, Sam still knew he's off tackle. Okay, and the strong safety now has to know he's got outside the tight end on a run fit. So you have to coordinate now with the strong safety, who with us is a quasi linebacker, a hero type. He understood how to come up. He had run responsibility, and he understood that, okay, this Sam always played inside the slot. Keep it simple. If the slot came down and attaches himself to make a flat surface, he still was outside the slot. So there was no difference. We're still attacking outside tackle. We're still attacking outside the slot. You take him out. Sam plays this gap. The strong safety plays this gap. So we're covered in any uh, scenario they might bring out. Now, I didn't call my blitzes in a huddle. We stayed in a muddle. We did move guys around. We did drop guys a little bit. So... But, uh, you know, this day of check with me, uh, I didn't want to send a blitz into a huddle and then them come out in quads to one side and find out that, uh, you know, my joker's now rushing. He's got quads left. Oh, boy. You know, so what we do is we wait for them to come out. And they do their check with me. And then we'd hand signal the blitz to the Will. My Will was a senior, very good linebacker. Okay, and he'd repeat the call. So... If we had like a stress call, so I came out and I liked what I saw for stress, I would call stress and uh, he'd repeat stress. And stress was Sam, both ends rush. So stress sent the uh, Joker and the Sam. Okay. And these guys, this was a nice blitz because really we had redundancy to this side by design. So nothing really changed. Okay. He, Cover three, cover two, we have the slot accounted for. Okay, Mike has flat responsibility on the screen. And he anything crossing, he's he's reading two, anything crossing, he's warning is an in in in. So we still have coverage. I, that was a good blitz for us. One of our go-to blitzes. I, I probably uh, it's funny, I'm running a video on blitzes, and my message is don't blitz that much. I we probably blitzed. I'd be surprised it was five times a game. Out of 40 some snaps, maybe. Um, we didn't blitz much. Because I'm always sending four, okay? Uh, and usually it was on uh, rundowns. So, uh, Swarm, I already talked about. Sam, Will, Mike, drop to the hole in Joker. Stress, we send the uh, Sam and Joker, okay? Tigo was our strong safety. So he would. Tigo was he would walk up. This was just to keep them honest. Okay. 
You see him drop back a little further. He had all pass responsibility. He basically took the position of strong safety. And bam, we go. Mike still has flat. Or if we ran America's Blitz, which we call Thunder. Okay, a little tip on this one here. We're going to long stick with the tackle. Also, in your blitz we'll get into, the, the defensive line sets your blitzes more than a lot of people realize. Um, we're sending the mic into the B gap, and we're sending the Sam. So now we have to cheat to this side a little bit with the, the will has a deep hole, strong safety. We kind of did a, a cover two on that. Three safeties backside. Joker now has back out of the backfield his side. So he would do a peel technique. He's rushing. He knows, okay, oh shit, we don't have a will anymore. He's dropped in deep hole. He would peel with back out of the backfield. One of the little tips to America's Blitz is uh, we would go, since we have him in the hole, we would go blue, starting again with the defensive line, okay? He knows he's going to hold defensive tackle, would take outside leverage. And the defensive tackle's job here at defensive end, defense, is he's dropping back. He is now the contain, okay? And he will take a wide, a wide angle outside. Because what we're seeing here is with the will here, and us crowding this side, and this mess over here, the quarterback naturally is going to run this way, okay? And if, if you had this guy four eye and up in here, as you can see, we're giving up a lot of leverage. We're getting this guy's space. The one thing I don't want, he's he's down. We're hoping the free safety to make the tackle out here. Remember, you know, in our league, quarterbacks usually can run. Maybe nobody else can, but the quarterbacks can run. So, a little tip that you don't always see, it is out there, uh, is the defensive end here on Thunder does not go and you just drill this. They don't have to remember. You just drill it. Uh, my defensive line coach was a great guy, pretty smart, played in college. So he would drill thunder. All right, they would bird dog it like offensive line and bird plays. And the backside end, no matter who he was, knew that on thunder, I go wide of the tackle, I go away from the quarterback, and we're flushing him. We're flushing like a rabbit, this quarterback. So I want him to be able to – he has a chance away, even though he's away from the blitz, He's the primary sack man, okay? We're going to run right to him. So there's the little tips on how we ran America's Blitz. Okay, we had, uh, I'll go quick into it, bone in. We saw a lot of double tight end formations. Usually, there's not two great stud tight ends at the high school level. So on bone in, Sam would walk up, the Joker's here, he would get line up outside the tight ends, and bone in is almost like stress, we're going to break down, we're going to go through the tight end, okay, and the safeties, and Will are scraping outside, and Mike are scraping outside, That's that was our bone in, we saw some read option veer stuff, and uh, that was our answer to it, it wasn't really, that was, uh, I don't even know if people would call that blitz, but that was one of our packages on our blitz chart. Really worked nice because my Joker and uh, Sam, like most everyone else's, were very good athletes, pretty big, strong guys. A lot of times, a lot of high schools, these tight ends were uh, like 175, 180 pound kids, uh, underclassmen. So we would actually just crush their edge, control their edge by going through that tight end, not letting them come down and block on our <clears throat> defensive ends. And we'd seal off the edge on the option read. Okay, one of my favorites is we had a hawk call, a hawk defense. So it looks the same to the offensive coordinator. Okay, right now in standard, our standard base, our nose guard. So he sets up our blitzes. He always went to the blue unless we called in for whatever reason him not to go blue. So. Blue is our pass side, green is our run side, blue and green can be the same side. With the running back away, since they usually take a mesh, okay, 
we consider this the green side and this is the blue side because now he's a threat he's a threat we have three receivers two receivers green blue okay nose guard is going to go blue this a gap that also took a read off of this will he knew he could he could cheat outside and if this kid pushed to the flat he was the will's responsibility in base he would drop do his hook curl and then attack the flat without having to worry about the a gap in front of him we had all the gaps pulled he was strictly past responsibility on this in case it had if they ran then he had front side a gap front front side <clears throat> c gap for the mic so we did a hot call in our base defense most of our guys are responsible for two gaps okay in our base okay the mic had he's responsible on front side a okay front side b i'm sorry c even though we got the nose guard here in b will still have made some redundancy will size a he has b so when i called in hawk i was telling them they had one gap responsibility so nose guard went hard here knowing he's a no he's he's sealing that hole hole for the will the mic now only has b gap is his first read he starts running to it will has backside a gap Sam now has outside tight end or slot. Strong safety fills. Okay. And we have flooded one side without giving up integrity because now we have, we're still running tight off the backside. He becomes a backside firewall. And then we can blitz off that. So we're starting to get into our, some of our best blitzes because then we can blitz on pass down. Okay. We call. Hawk X. X was a cross, okay? Obviously, that was our Hawk call. Hawk X, blue, you point to the sky, the sky's blue, green, okay? The, uh, is the green side, grass is green. So, you know, these calls are really quick, really simple. They come out in something, uh, formation. I'd look at the formation to come in, I'd look at the will, and I'd say, you know, Hawk X blue okay so hawk x blue meant we're going to hawk defense one gap responsibilities x in with the nose guard so the nose guards here mike's has once again outside and the will is scraping right across into the far a gap whether it be a blitz or a run prayer this really worked good against trap schemes actually we we uh, had talked about it. You start doing these hands. Keep it simple. You maintain flexibility. So we were playing a game that had a pretty big, strong offensive line. They were running a lot of gap and trap on us, having some success. But we did it from the sideline. Okay, we. That's how we came with Hawk X Blue. Okay, they would pull a trap, and we started getting tackles in the backfield. Okay, our other. Uh, we go Wham X, which. Now the nose guard is a two gapper. He's going to strike the nose guard, and we're Xing. This is wham, X. Okay, we're we're crossing the will and Mike, exchanging gaps. Of course, we had just straight. We can go, you know, Mike or Will. So this is Will go, Mike go, and then straight. You're sending them to their respective gaps, looking for run first with no pass responsibility. Again, the other Mike or Will, they flip flop. They went just to a hole dropper. Okay. So on most of these two, that we we didn't have to get really uh, elaborate with the coverages because most all those blitzes with the linebackers and the hole dropping and the Joker knowing to peel. That was about the only thing knew that the kids had to remember to do uh especially if you drilled it every week all these blitzes but with that we could stay in cover two cover three or man free in just about any situation so there's some tips on how we ran our blitz packages how to keep it simple but yet seem complicated we're doing a lot of stuff there and really it's almost criticized myself it was too much 
really for calling four blitzes of five blitzes a game on rundowns i probably had too much in but uh you know kids love it and you gotta you know i want them to have fun i want them to have experience and uh you know as a dc it it's kind of like uh you feel like you got to do something right that's usually when i'm on oc we take advantage of that we know their deeps corner he's going to want to do something he's going to be aggressive on certain downs he's got to say he called a blitz he, it's hard for a deeps coordinator to stand there and say boy this is a really important down let's do nothing let's stay in base uh <laughs> base is sometimes one of your most aggressive defenses and it's as a dc it was my instinct to actually i got to do something i got to keep and the kids want something so I would try to mix it up. We practiced blitzes. I would do them on rundowns. They understood where we were coming from. They understood we had success in base, so they didn't freak out if it was third and one and I said base. Um, and, you know, it, it's almost like being an office coordinator where the office coordinator feels pressure to do something as in pass. You know, you got to be aggressive and throw the deep ball. And you have people tell you, we got blitz, we got to be aggressive. I'm like, what the hell are you talking about? We're defense. We are always aggressive. Do not ever say, be aggressive, let's blitz. Um, if you're, that means at times you're not aggressive. And if at times in base you're not aggressive, you're not going to be a good defense. So that was some of the joy we got out of giving the kids too, is that you're aggressive on every down. Every down is like a blitz. The only difference between a blitz and not blitz is I took away pass responsibility, you're attacking. And if you have pass responsibility, you should be reading that play. You read run, you go. I will never yell at you for, now, they don't turn, they turn on blitz, they start running for X, but I will never get upset if you're attacking your hole downhill on your read. So you see the double team right here in A gap. He reads, he sees this. Okay, that guard comes down. He needs to be here right now. I will not yell at him for uh, not being there or, you know, not running into the double team or drop pass. So he's almost always, always blitzing, really. Um, it just, a matter of how much time you take before going a step or two that, that's it you're attacking all the time we're always aggressive on defense so i hope that helps you i hope that helps clear up some stuff you know as an oc i love seeing full house blitzes on cover three and running a slant underneath of it and uh, uh we scored some some pretty big plays on that when i was on the offensive side of the ball so if you like doing that and you play me keep please keep doing that don't don't do what i just showed you so uh hey have a great day have a great uh Fishing season. Uh, see you next time. Peace out.